Hi everyone, in this video, Apostle Joshua Selman will be sharing with us on how to live a victorious life. The manifestation of a believer's life depends on their knowing and consistently engaging the truth. Stay connected and be prepared to be blessed by this video production. God bless you. Open your Bible and read and you will find what is written there. And you will see what is happening in your life versus what the Bible says should happen. It says your children are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. Yet you love the Lord with all your heart and you have trained five children. Not one of them is walking, not one of them is risen, all born again, spirit filled. And every morning you hear the sound of those children. They wake you up with their prayers, you, they, you sleep while they are praying. And yet you are saying, what kind of a God is this? That after five years, he cannot give, even if it's one of my child a job. I am telling you, the problem is not God. There is something about the system he designed that we do not understand. Welcome to Chat Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 130, the entrance of thy word giveth life. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. By the privilege of God's grace and not to brag, I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility. I'm involved in the life of many families and many children, believe me. And I know how much is committed and invested literally daily and weekly to keep many families and many people alive and strong. And, so, and for most of these families, they are Christians. And you will be asking, okay, what was the system of mentorship they were exposed to? And why all these gaps? There are many young people now getting into fraud, internet fraud and the rest. And most of them are church people. And we're asking questions. They are praying in tongues. But while they are praying in tongues, they are about to cheat somebody in the night. Are we together now? Now listen carefully. And we may say it does not matter. Until the day the church starts grooming armed robbers. There are robbers that kidnap people and catch people and quote scriptures and even laugh. They are not ignorant people. It's just that there are systems we are ignoring in the body of Christ. And it's beginning to tell now. Artificial intelligence is taking over the place of employment. In the, many people are not prepared for the world that is coming in the next 5 to 10 years. Listen to what I'm telling you. Many believers will say it doesn't matter. I have God. God is all like you are right. But do you know the dynamics of allowing the power of God to work in your life? There is a generation that will be exposed to the world that they do not know anything about. And I'm not talking of the next 20 years. The next 5 to 10 years, there will be casualties in the body of Christ if we do not restore wholesome knowledge that produces wholesome victories. So we're going to have a bunch of people who will truly, because you see the Bible says, for everyone that seeketh, find it. There are people, the only thing they are seeking is prosperity. They are seeking the loss of the kingdom by fire, by force. And through diligence, they will find it. The trouble is, if the only thing they find is prosperity, when a man prospers and he does not have character, he becomes a weapon of mass destruction to himself and to society. Then there will be a group of frustrated people who love the Lord, character, loving Jesus with all their hearts. And yet you find out that nothing will work in their lives. And in pain they will say, God, why did you do this to me? Other people were bribing, other people were doing all of that. And I avoided this because of my love for you. We've been shouting for a very long time. The wealth of the wicked is laid for the righteous. We've been saying these things since I was growing up. Till now, the wealthy people are getting wealthier and the church is suffering. We are suffering. We are getting into trouble. We are in debt. We are in all kinds of things. And those people sometimes watch with shock what we are saying. Because those things are true, but those statements are incomplete. The dynamics of the workings of those strategies we have not learned. Are we together? How about power? Sometimes we talk against 
herbalist and all of that, I will never promote evil and, you know, demonic things. But I'm saying that we, we say, don't go to herbalist, don't go to the devil, don't do all of these things. Okay, I refuse to go to the devil and I've come to you, Joshua Selman. The truth is that I need you to help me. Things are not working in my life. And I say, well, things are not working just because you are not serious. And the person says, I'm a diligent person. What do you mean I'm not serious? As elaborate as what I'm saying is, this is speaking to the pain of many of you seated looking at me right now. There are many of you who already have accumulated frustration. You are just getting almost to a, a breaking point where it's as if look at our young people and their disdain for church there's not much of that happening because in africa we still have you know our you know our moral fabric is still is still intact to an extent but you go across the world and you see empty churches that you find a church with 100 people and they're celebrating they call that a crowd and yet a secular person or someone somewhere who is about to do something godless and from morning till night people pack up theaters and pack up everything celebrate and we think it does not matter wait until a godless society takes over the helm of government then you will see what happens preachers are getting discouraged because even they themselves are not understanding why this thing is not working again after preaching and writing books for many years I cannot understand why this is working again I thought the key was confession I have confessed the word sincerely I have done it with all my heart what else is left oh there is a lot that is left I have walked in holiness and righteousness you will say loving the Lord sincerely with all my heart what else is left there is still a lot that is left I've been diligent and hard-working I sleep late in the night I wake up early in the morning I'm, I'm, I've given myself to trainings and, and the rest what else is left there is still a lot more that is left my assignment tonight is to provoke you to let you know that that victorious life in Christ is your destiny but like the human body ladies and gentlemen there is a call to explore the other dimensions that have not yet been added to produce wholesome victory. Otherwise, we are going to be quoting scripture. Thanks be to God who causes us to triumph and we will watch our loved ones sadly continue to die in ill health because we are not willing to explore the vast riches. What are the keys that control the healing anointing? What are the keys that control prosperity and wealth? What are the keys that control influence? What are the keys that control longevity what are the keys that control excellence what are the keys we need to find these keys he says and I will give you the keys of the kingdom I submit to you there is no single man that has all the keys by himself God himself will not even allow that you can have all the keys work in your life and that by gleaning to the body the larger body through humility to receive other keys that may not be in your personal experience with God are we together open your Bible and read and you will find what is written there and you will see what is happening in your life versus what the Bible says should happen it says your children are taught of the Lord and great is their peace yet you love the Lord with all your heart and you have trained five children not one of them is walking not one of them is risen all born again spirit filled and every morning you hear the sound of those children they wake you up with their prayers. You, they, you sleep while they are praying. And yet you are saying, what kind of a God is this? That after five years, he cannot give, even if it's one of my child a job. I am telling you, the problem is not God. There is something about the system he designed that we do not understand. Are we together? Yes. I'm born again filled with the Holy Spirit but people don't like coming around me I don't even have friends what kind of thing is this it must be demonic okay we agree that there are spirits there okay you come for miracle service and these spirits are casted yet after five months you still don't have any friend what is wrong another spirit you may be having a journey forever that will cause you pain the real key is to now go back. Now that that deliverance has happened, what are the laws that govern relationships? 
He that wants friends must show himself friendly. You learn people's skills. You learn the law of honor. You see, when you learn these other dimensions, you find out in one week you can have great friends and that includes your destiny helpers coming along. Are we together? I'm a man of God, but why is it that I'm not succeeding in ministry? I will tell you, among many other reasons, it can be that you are not providing the kind of results, the kind of value, even though spiritual, that is needed and useful. Can people come to you? Can they come and learn God from you and be sure they will not be disappointed? Can they come and you pray for them and they are sure that they will return with testimonies? Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. Psychologists teach us that one of the indices, the major index that measures our concept of happiness is progress. I hope you know that. That the degree to which you perceive you are making progress, it would translate to joy in your heart. And I can tell you it is true. Even as a man of God, it is true. I'll be wicked to just downplay. I come here every week. I'm happy. There are so many people inside, outside, everybody. I am happy God sent me. But I am happy you are coming. Because it is proof that the value is changing you. It is proof that something is changing in your life. Are we together now? If I can be happy as a man of God that I'm making progress, why will not I not want the people that God brings around me to also make progress? They may not be preachers, but what is wrong in you having your own house? After 20 years, what is wrong in you at least having a car? It's not all about cars, but must you trek for the rest of your life? Is that the will of God? Say no. no. I can be the will of God. And you know, sometimes we downplay these things and say it does not matter. And a gentleman was trekking since he was in, in college. And now after 30 years, he's holding four children and his wife. He's still trekking, praying in tongues for 20 years, quoting scripture for 20 years. Something is not working. It's not just about money. I'm just using this to show you that when a system is faulty in your life, there is the, the deficiency becomes clear and your children can come and inherit that deficiency. I vowed and I told myself that everything I had to suffer in my life, anybody that comes from me, physical, spiritual children will never go through that again. This is why you see me laboring to tell you this. It is from a heart of love. As for me, I believe the things I'm teaching and I'm honored. I thank God that I have my results to show. So if I do not love you, I will not care. I'll just say, let's come and pray and go. If you are fortunate to have a testimony, may God bless you. No, not here. Not here. I will insist in love. If it's to cry, we will cry together. If it's to pray, we'll pray together. If it's to be diligent, we'll be diligent together until your life becomes a praise to the nations. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are many people who have downplayed prayer. They are hard working, but they do not pray because they do not know that in the place of fellowship, there is an advantage that comes upon your life. And so when you talk about prayer, they say, don't mind all these poor people. They are just praying because they are poor and broke. No, you may be making a mistake. And so most of them say the only demon is, you know, and they make all kinds of statements that should not be. Eventually, the person becomes a billionaire and one strike from hell and all that money vanishes. Back to my example on the human body. I mentioned nine systems that I want you to pay attention to because I truly believe, and you are to, if you are to be honest with yourself, it's possible that one or more systems may be found wanting even if it has not gone to a point it has not packed up maybe it's declining you know how doctors can warn people and say look i checked your sugar level it's not yet so bad but be careful because you are you are having is going down or you, you understand that that's what god is doing to some of us the trouble has not yet manifested but it's on its way if you do not change Write this down. The believer's victory. Please write this down. The believer's victory 
will only be made manifest by understanding and engaging the various systems of the kingdom the believers victory will only be made manifest please underline the word manifest the believers victory will only be made manifest by understanding and engaging the various systems of the kingdom what are the systems of the kingdom like the various parts of the human body there is the prayer system there is the speaking of the word you know there's the place for mental transformation. There's the place for character and moral excellence. There's the place for diligence. I like to use the word diligence instead of hard work. There's the place for relationships. There's the place for the anointing. There is the place for patience. There's the place for mentorship. These are the various systems that are responsible. Maybe I should run through a few of them again. There's the prayer system designed to help men make contact with God I have taught you listen to my teachings on prayer the assignments of prayer in the life of the believer how about the place of the word confessing the word studying the word make reference to my teaching equipping the saints I preach it in Zaria it's on our global page mental transformation there are many believers who do not subscribe for mental transformation they love God, they pray, they fast, but their understanding is so barren and unfruitful. It cannot purchase anything notable because of a level of mental bankruptcy. And I'm not just talking from an academic standpoint. Enlightenment, understanding how life works. The Bible says to be wise as a serpent and to be gentle as doves. It said, I send you as sheep among wolves. So be wise as a serpent. Why would God recommend a serpent when it has to do with having the wisdom of living in the cosmos? Mental transformation. Then there is a place of character. Then there is a place of diligence. There are people who pray and fast and study scripture, rightly so, but they never study the materials that lead to their excelling in their field of endeavor. The Bible gives you a holistic viewpoint of life, but as far as becoming excellent and gaining mastery is concerned, you have to be able to lay hold the area where God has called you into. If you're a career person, you must be excellent. You are a medical person, be excellent. Listen, there are two people who the Bible commended their prayer lives in the Bible. I, I don't want to take the time to teach on that, but just to teach you a very powerful lesson. One of them is Elijah. Elijah was even referred to in the book of James as a template to help us pray. But another person was Daniel. The difference between the two is Daniel did not just pray alone. Daniel was commended not just for his prayer life. Daniel was commended for the spirit of excellence and intelligence. And notice that of two of them, when we remember the one who had a systemic impact, we remember Daniel. They both prayed, but in addition, Daniel was intelligent. He was flawless. At least we know Elijah was an angry man. Because there are certain things about administration and leadership. If he learned, he would have added to his prayer life and made him a better presentation of God's ambassador. And this was what Daniel, I, Daniel, understood by books. You never see I, Elijah, in addition to this. He called down fire. Yes, I agree. He judged the prophets of Baal, but he ran away. He ran away. You remember when he ran away? You never see Daniel running away because he was preserved by wisdom. Even in a strange and a foreign land, there were other things he had that stabilized him. His prayer was exceptional. He dealt with the spirits of the Medes and the Persians. But my goodness, they sought for an occasion to mock God and they did not find any. He was flawless. Unbelievers testified that he had the spirit of the gods there. Can they say that about you in office? Or the only thing they'll say is that you pray and you fast. You are the, you are the poorest in terms of your job. You are, you, and you are saying, apostle, you have to pray for me. I want to become the CEO. I love you, but I love the company too. Should it go down just because? 
Do you get what I'm teaching you now? Listen, I thank God, I study and I pray. But let me tell you sincerely and I will not lie to you. There, there is a dimension of understanding that only books will give you. You have to buy the truth and sit down. Most people want a global ministry. They want a global life. And all they have been taught that is responsible for global influence is impartation. You see that? Impartation is a system in the kingdom. But the value of impartation is that it comes upon a mind that has been transformed. Transformed through knowledge. Transformed through discipline. What is the call today? God is calling us. Calling us to a life of excellence. Calling us to a life of victory. God is calling us to rewrite the mistakes of those who have gone before us. And that if we keep following that template alone, without finding what else went wrong, to have produced the lopsidedness that we see in those who have gone before us, we will reproduce the same results, including the same limitations. Let me give you a final charge. Write this down. I truly believe that in the days that come, the days that are before us, the Lord will have believers to focus on three areas. Many areas, but three areas. And this came by the Spirit for me. And I said, I'll, I'll use this to wrap up my session so that we'll pray. There are three major areas that believers must focus on and contend for victory in experience. Number one, your spiritual health. Please write it down. Number one, your spiritual health. That means this should be the areas of focus, especially within the season that we're in now. Your spiritual health. That includes your relationship with God. Matthew 22, please give us from verse 37. We're reading down to 40. Your spiritual health. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Next verse. This is the first and greatest commandment. 39. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It says on these two commandments hang the law and the prophet. That means the purpose for all the law and the commandments that were given was a way of forcing you to achieve these two things. To love the Lord with all your heart and then to love your neighbor as yourself. Are we together now? Very important. Your spiritual health. Romans chapter 8 from verse 35. Paul gives us a very intelligent rendition there. He said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, peril or the sword? Next verse. We are reading to 38. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter 37 it says nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us and then it says for i am persuaded may this be your persuasion tonight that neither death nor life read with me nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come uh-huh shall be able nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in jesus christ our lord your spiritual health that you must love the lord above and beyond anything above and beyond anyone it's been my emphasis our precious people sang it here that we must love him we must seek him loving the lord means that your prayer life must be up and alive loving the lord means that your fasting life must be up and alive loving the lord means that your word study life must be up and alive your passion for the house of god your passion for the things of god must be up and alive number two what is the second area god will want us to focus on in this season write this down your personal needs hmm. your personal needs and ladies and gentlemen please hear me do not downplay this take it as a prophetic instruction God wants you to begin to focus on your personal needs and get some results in place so that it can give you room to serve a bigger purpose are we together now yes 
your personal needs food shelter and all the personal things that you need to put in place if you don't think about it you don't plan it you don't take advantage of the grace of god to put things in place it will never happen hallelujah your personal needs that you make up your mind and say by the grace of god I should get to a point where this issue of thinking, where will I get money to buy food? Solve it. Solve it. So that you can have the time to do no black kingdom things. When your personal needs are not sorted, I promise you, I wrote something down here. I said, your personal needs being met is the cure to depression and frustrations. When your personal needs are met, I can preach here and I can shout because I have Jesus in my heart, but I also have food in my house. Are we together now? Yes, sir. I have food in my house. So it has energized me to shout the word to your spirit because when I am done, I can go back. Jesus, your Jesus who preached at crusades, the Bible clearly told us that there were times he was hungry and there were provisions in place. Am I right on that? Listen to me. Please, I want you to take your personal needs seriously. Not just carnal needs, but that which is required to give you the stability to serve God. Like your children's school fees. Write it down and start doing something about it. Like the issue of a house. Write it down. Whether to rent or to build. In any way, take action. I have a responsibility over you. I will teach you the truth. It may not make sense now, but you will look back and say, thank you, apostle, for challenging me to take a step. There are people who come and dedicate your houses before the end of this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. See, every time God gives instructions like this, it's because behind that instruction is a grace to make it happen. You know what will happen to you by the time you sort the issue of rent out of your life? And God helps you to put systems in place. Now you can send your children to good schools. Now you have the authorization to lock yourself for three days. And you will not feel irresponsible. Now your prayer life will become richer. You can pray for three days. But not when your children are out of school and they are writing PTA letters and your relatives are calling you all kinds of names. Then you say you are in the retreat for three days. No. Please take your personal needs serious. There are things that if they are not in place, if you are a man of God here, thank God for ministry and thank God for everything. But please, by all means, obtain grace to pay attention Oh, apostle, I think I need a car now to help me to be efficient in ministry. Do not think you are carnal for thinking that. If there is a legitimate need, write it down and obtain the grace and the wisdom to do something about it.